Several news agencies are beginning to report that numerous FC Barcelona players have been found guilty of tax evasion over the past few years. Now these are just alleged reports so nothing official has been released by UEFA but it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of statement UEFA will be making in the next few days and what sorts of consequences Barcelona might serve and what kind of players might be suspended. UEFA have released a statement on the future of several FC Barcelona players. Despite what the courts decides to sentence, UEFA has stated that the players involved will be banned for no less than five years. What will this mean for manager Luis Enrique and the club as a whole? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. From my understanding, the players that will be serving a five-year suspension are Lionel Messi, Luis Suarez, Neymar, Andre Iniesta and Gerard Piquet. Now, the club itself haven't been found guilty of tax evasion, and they've said that the punishments that have been dished out are more than appropriate. Also, Luis Enrique will be remaining in charge of the club as manager, but it's going to be an incredibly difficult task. Hey guys, Sam here, and welcome to our FC Barcelona career mode. And as you could tell from the start of the video, social media is buzzing over the news that players have been suspended from football due to tax evasion. You could see the videos being made by several YouTubers talking about the issue. And it's a very, very big issue in the world of football. Now, you might be asking if Luis Enrique is the manager, who exactly am I? I'm the head of social media at FC Barcelona, or let's pretend that I am. And what I'll be doing is be getting your questions and inquiries over the future of FC Barcelona, especially in the club's turmoil at the moment. And I will be directly talking with Luis Enrique and I'll be getting responses from him and be directing them to you guys. So if you have any questions or anything like that, then go ahead and let me know in the comment section below and I'll be relaying those messages to Luis Enrique. And at the start of every month or so, I will be doing a press conference letting you guys know what Luis Enrique is responses were to your questions. So as you can see, we're in July 2016, which means we're in the 2016-17 season. And I can confirm that most of the players that were caught up in the whole tax evasion thing have been released by FC Barcelona. The only person that hasn't been released is Neymar, um, but I can't confirm whether or not he will be released in the future or not. At the moment, he's on the reserves, he's not going to be used, and going forward, it's going to be very, very challenging for FC Barcelona to replicate the form that they have over the past several years. So let's go ahead and run through the squad as it looks after the players have been released and suspended. Up top is Munir, on the right is Arda Turan with Teo on the left, Halilovic, Busquets and Rakitic make up a midfield three with Alba, Matthew, Bartra and Alves as a back four with Claudio. Bravo in between the sticks. It's still a pretty solid team, but it will be a challenge, especially up front. Luis Enrique is going to have to fix up a lot of things and find replacements for a lot of players. Um, really, really good for Barcelona that the likes of Busquets, uh, in my opinion, I think Busquets is the most important player in the team and he hasn't been suspended. He wasn't found guilty of tax evasion, which is very good. The midfield is really, I think, the strongest part of the team, but replacements will have to be made, improvements will have to be made, and you never know. With this news coming out in the summer of 2016, it's still really up in the air whether or not a few of these players will leave. Some of the older players might want to leave FC Barcelona. They might see this club as now tainted, and they might not want their reputations tarnished by playing for this club. So you never know. Maybe some of these players are going to bail now that the likes of Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez and Neymar aren't playing. Maybe that's the reason they moved here. Maybe that's the reason they stayed here. And seeing as they're gone, maybe a lot of these players will be sold as well. So a lot is up in the air with FC Barcelona right now. And so I think Luis Enrique definitely has his job cut out for him. Improving this team is not going to be an easy feat. And challenging for the league, again, is not going to be an easy feat. What I can confirm for you guys is the players that Luis Enrique would like to bring in in each position, his preferred players in each position. So as you can see, he'd like to bring in a backup goalkeeper. Um, there's news circulating that either Claudio Bravo or Tostigan could be leaving the club after the news. So he wanted to bring in a Spanish goalkeeper and Kepa Arizabalaga was in his number one pick for a backup goalkeeper. He had a stunning under-21 Euros, if you guys did watch the under-21 Euros. So Kepa Arizabalaga is on number one on his list for goalkeepers. In the right-back position, there's a lot of news that Dani Alves is
is moving potentially to teams like Juventus and even Chelsea. A Serie A Brazilian right back is who they're looking at. That's Bruno Perez. Very Danny Alves-like, very attacking, very quick. And he could potentially be the replacement for Danny Alves. In centre-back position with Gerard PK being released, we have Samuel Umtiti as the number one pick as an FC Barcelona player for the 2016-17 season. Apparently, Omtiti has already said that he's very interested in joining FC Barcelona, so we shouldn't have too much trouble getting him on board. Riyad Mahrez is the preferred right midfielder, despite having Arda Turan. Luis Enrique does not see him as a starting player, and Riyad Mahrez had an amazing season with Leicester City, and shows that he is a quality right midfielder, so that could be a potential signing for FC Barcelona. And then two big boys, Douglas Costa of FC Bayern Munich. So only spent one season there. So the likelihood of this transfer happening is pretty low, but Luis Enrique said he's ready to throw a lot of cash Douglas Costa's way to play. But this is probably gonna be the toughest of the deals to bring him in. And last but not least, to replace the striker Luis Suarez, it's Sergio Aguero. Luis Enrique says that this is his preferred striker. He doesn't want anybody else. And he feels like Sergio Aguero could be a future Ballon d'Or winner. He still has a few years in his prime and he's a very, very good striker. Probably the best striker in the world at the moment. Luis Enrique has definitely expressed his interest. And again, that'll be a pretty difficult one to do. But Manchester City and FC Barcelona have dealed in the past. So that could help, uh, especially if the fee is right. We all know Manchester City doesn't need money, but they like money. So depending on what offers are being made, that could potentially be a good signing as well. Those are his first picks. He does have back Ups for each position should they not want to join the club but those that's the short list of his number one picks for each position that he is trying to bolster All right, Chelsea are in for Danny Alves could potentially be swooping him straight from Juventus's nose the counter offer that FC Barcelona has offered is 12 million pounds and they'll be happy to let Danny Alves go especially with Bruno Perez seemingly inching closer to a move to FC Barcelona so Chelsea could potentially be stealing him right from Juventus's nose. Manchester City have said that they would want 74 million pounds for Sergio Aguero, the former Atletico Madrid striker. And the initial offer that FC Barcelona did offer was 48 million. We know that Luis Enrique is not willing to pay the 74 million, but is willing to negotiate with Manchester City. So the 55 million offer is the next one that Luis Enrique offered. And a big surprise, FC Bayern Munich are willing to let Douglas Costa go for a measly 22 million pounds. Now you would expect Douglas Costa to cost a little bit more than that. He was an amazing player for FC Bayern Munich last season, but apparently he's not having fun in Germany. He thinks the weather's a bit too cold. It's not Brazilian-like at all, and he's wanting to move to Spain, and FC Barcelona could be the number one destination. We just have to agree personal terms with him. He wants a 20k increase in his wages, and he will definitely be a starting player at FC Barcelona. Right, we have an offer here from Manchester United for Jeremy Matthew. Now, this is a player that Luis Enrique said he would be happy to let go, and 8.5 million pounds looks pretty good for the 32-year-old, especially with Samuel Antiti on the horizon saying that he wants to join Barcelona. He's a left-footed centre-back. Matthew's a left-footed centre-back. So maybe he's not needed anymore. 8.5 million pounds does look good and Barcelona can definitely use that money. And the other offer is from Everton for Ivan Rakitic, who hasn't really spoken out on the situation. Whether or not he wants to stay at Barcelona is still a mystery. He hasn't made any formal statements. FC Barcelona need to keep as much of their best talent as possible and they'll be rejecting offers for Ivan Rakitic until he says that he wants to leave the club. Chelsea come back with a 10 million offer and looks like they are going to be able to say sign Danny Alves instead of Juventus. That's a huge move for Chelsea. He's still a quality right back. And it seems Manchester City have accepted a 55 million pound deal for Sergio Aguero. He wants a 60k increase in his wages and that is probably going to be a really good signing for FC Barcelona right there. Bringing an Argentine in after losing an Argentine, that'll probably help as well. And he's just a class striker. We're trying to rebuild another front three there and Aguero and Douglas Costa look like they're on their way. If we could add Riyad Mahrez to that, that looks like a pretty good front three to me. We have an offer here from Newcastle United for Mark Bartra. Luis Enrique has said that Mark Bartra is going to be the future of FC Barcelona. He's going to be the main center back this season and we'll be building a defense around him. Pretty good comments for Mark Bartra and his morale. And as you can see, he, at the moment he's content, but I'm sure with a starting spot, he will really be happy that he's finally slotted into the FC Barcelona Barcelona centre-back position and he's definitely got a few more years in him so there's no way we're selling him. Actually we're going to reject all offers from now on for Mark Bartra. Those comments from Luis Enrique could have potentially kept him 
at the club, and I'm sure it's a very exciting time for him to be starting for FC Barcelona. The first confirmed transfer is what I thought would be the most difficult transfer, and that is signing Douglas Costa from FC Bayern Munich for a sum of £22 million, on £120,000 a week. That is a very good deal, and I hope he enjoys the sunshine and the weather at Barcelona. And following him through the door is Sergio Aguero. So the damage in the front three has sort of been dealt with, with two fantastic signings. They're no Luis Suarez and Neymar, but they're definitely not that bad either. Sergio Aguero especially could be doing a really good job in the striker position. He could really replace Luis Suarez very, very well, and we're happy to be signing him from Manchester City. As you can see, there's not too much money left in the bank. Of course, we can adjust those wages a bit, but we're still in preliminary talks with a lot of the players, so you never know with a few players getting sold on, it could be enough to sign the players that we want to sign. And two of the players that we can confirm have left FC Barcelona include Jeremy Matthew, who's on his way to Manchester United, a bit of experience in the defense there, and also Danny Alves has moved to Chelsea. So two Premier League moves there. We wish both of luck to both of them, and hopefully they can do the best they can at each of their clubs. We have an offer here for from AC Milan for Marc Andre to Steigen. He said that he wants to leave FC Barcelona. As you can see, his morale is unhappy at the moment. He's not happy with the turmoil that the club is in. He's not sure where the club's gonna go. And Claudio Bravo has said that he wants to stay. So Marc Andre to Steigen is looking for a move after a pretty unsuccessful stint at FC Barcelona. Looks like AC Milan are the number one front runners. 19 million pounds for the German goalkeeper, a really talented goalkeeper. Claudio Bravo is our main man. He had a fantastic fantastic Copa America Centenario. He won it as well, and he was the goalkeeper of the tournament. So we'll be keeping him, and Marc-Andre Steigen will probably be moving to AC Milan. Roma have also come in 20 million this time for Marc-Andre Steigen. So it looks like a Serie A team is where he's going to be going. Which one will it be? And to replace Steigen, we'll be signing Kepa Arizabalaga, or we'll be trying to sign Kepa Arizabalaga. He had a very good under-21 Euro tournament, and so he's not going to be that easy to sign. We're also beginning talks with FC Torino over the signing of Bruno Perez. He'll cost us around 12 million, but we're going to see how much we can save on him. He's a really talented right back. We've also sent out an initial offer for Samuel Omtiti of Lyon. And last but definitely not least, we are in contact with Leicester City over Riyad Mahrez, who has had an amazing season in the Premier League, so definitely will cost us quite a bit of coin. We have an offer here from Wolfsburg for Jordi Alba, the 27 year old left back. Seems like he's happy at FC Barcelona, probably does want to stay. He's Spanish, it suits him. And he's been assured by the club that he is a starting left back here, as he has been for the last couple of seasons. He's not going to be part of this new overhaul. He's not going to lose his spot, and he's pretty happy with that. So, we'll be happy to keep him. And we can confirm that Mark andre Ter Steigen has moved to AC Milan. That was his preferred team, and he's moved for a sum of $19 million. That's $16 million added to our bank. Out of Milan and Roma, it seems like Milan is the more prestigious team, and he has decided to to move there. We wish him the best of luck. Torino have said that they would like 19 million for their right back. Now that's a bit pricey, a little bit more than we expected Torino to counter us with. So we're going to go with 13 million, see what they say to that. We still do have a lot of money, but we're trying to save as much as we can. And Leicester City have said that their main man is going to cost nearly 30 million pounds. So there's a little bit of negotiating to do with Leicester City as well. I don't blame them. He's an absolute beast, one of their main players. So, so we didn't expect them to let him go without a fight. We have an offer here for Jordi Massip with the news that Kepa Arizabalaga is potentially moving to FC Barcelona. He's probably going to want to move on and he's going to go to Deportivo La Coruña and hopefully he'll find a starting spot there and hopefully he'll be able to kickstart a career that he never really had at FC Barcelona over at another club. He's not the world's best keeper, but he could definitely do a job. So hopefully he gets that move and hopefully he gets a starting spot there. And now Arsenal have come in for Ivan Rakitic. Again, a set of play that we weren't willing to let go. And despite being a team that has a lot of money, we still do not want to let Ivan Rakitic go. We're going to reject all offers. We're trying to keep as many of our talented players as possible. His experience is vital to that midfield and we do not want to let him go. We have come back and said that even though Samuel Umtiti does want to join us, going to cost us 25 million to sign the French center back a little bit more than we were expecting but we're going to try and negotiate with him and bring him in 22 years of age and he could be a really good signing for us. Athletic Bilbao have accepted a 5 million pound offer for Kepa Arizabalaga and we'll be offering him 35,000 pounds a week and it will be a squad rotational player we'll put him down as squad rotational we could even put him down as a sporadic first team player either way I think he'd want to join the club. He'll be playing maybe some of the cup games so we'll probably put him down as a 
sporadic first team player and see what he says to that, but we'd love to have him at the club. Torino is sticking by that 19 million price tag for Bruno Perez. They're not budging, but we're still, fingers crossed, we're hoping that they will accept a lesser offer. Unless the City have accepted a 22 million pound offer for Riyad Mahrez, we're expecting him to join the club for sure. I, we don't see why he'd want to stay at Leicester City if he could join FC Barcelona. We're more than doubling his wages, almost tripling his wages, so hopefully he sees that FC Barcelona is his next destination. We have an offer here from Arsenal for Thomas Vermaelen, and their former centre-back. Seems they want him back for some reason, I'm not sure why. 30 years of age, doesn't really start for FC Barcelona, has been injured a few times at FC Barcelona, and Luis Enrique says that he wants to move on from Thomas Vermaelen, so we will be accepting a seven and a half million pound deal, and we'll be happy to cut our losses there and let him go. Maybe he can rekindle the form that he had at Arsenal. There's no future for him at FC Barcelona, unfortunately. Leon is sticking to their guns. They want that 25 million for Samuel Amtiti, but we're gonna be trying to cut it down a little bit, even if it saves us a few million pounds. And as we can confirm, Jordi Massip has moved to Deportivo La Coruña for the sum of 775,000 pounds. So we wish him the best of luck. And we can confirm that Riyad Mahrez is an FC Barcelona player and that completes our signings for the front three. Fantastic three right there. And hopefully they'll gel quickly and learn each other's games. We are very happy to announce that Riyad Mahrez is an FC Barcelona player. We can also confirm that Kepa Arizabalaga is now an FC Barcelona player, a young Spanish goalkeeper, and we're very happy to announce him as an FC Barcelona player, as our backup goalkeeper behind Claudio Bravo. Torino are very adamant that they want this 19 million, and at risk of potentially losing Bruno Perez and Torino not talking to us and not negotiating anymore, we're going to offer that 19 million just in case they pull out of these negotiations. We really do want Bruno Perez. Feels like a proper replacement for Danny Alves, a Brazilian for a Brazilian, an attacking right back for an attacking right back. It feels like it's a perfect fit, so we do not want to lose out on Bruno Perez. We'll be offering the 19 million. It's a bit hefty, a bit more than we expected, but we're willing to pay the price. And we can confirm that Thomas Vermaelen is once again an Arsenal player, moving back to London for the sum of seven and a half million pounds. We wish Thomas the best of luck, and we hope he doesn't get injured too much. And finally, Leon have accepted 22 million pounds for Samuel Umtiti. He'll be on £90,000 a week on a four-year deal, and we're hoping he'll join us, him and Mark Bartra, as our two centre-backs. And there you have it, Samuel Umtiti has confirmed that he will join FC Barcelona, the team that he wanted to join at the start of the transfer window. It's finally happened about a month in, and we're happy to announce that he is now our starting centre-back on the left-hand side, along with Mark Bartra. We're hoping they can form a lengthy relationship in the centre-back position. Both still have many, many years ahead of them, and they could potentially be our centre-back partnership for another five to ten years, so we're really happy with that. And more good news, and Torino have accepted our 19 million pound deal for Bruno Perez so hopefully he'll be joining us as well a big step up from him from Torino to FC Barcelona we hope he's ready for the challenge we have an offer here from Malaga for Adriano our backup left back I guess he is we'll be letting him go to Malaga he's a pretty solid player but really there's no need for him at the moment Jordi Alba is a fantastic left back and I'm sure if we have a few of our youth players coming through we'll have a decent left back as a replacement for him so 2.2 million pounds for Adriano's move to Malaga. And there you have it, Bruno Perez has joined FC Barcelona, the last signing that Luis Enrique wanted to make. And there you have it, that's what the team looks like going into this 2016-17 season. It's Sergio Aguero up front with Douglas Costa on the left and Riyad Mahrez on the right. Halilovic, Busquets and Rakitic make up a midfield three with Jordi Alba, Samuel Umtiti, Mark Bartra and Bruno Perez as a back four, Claudio Bravo, in between the sticks, a mix of youth and experience in this team, potential and already established players. So the team is looking pretty solid. Of course, it's not the same as it was before the suspensions and the releases, but we're still very happy with what we've been able to do in the transfer window and the signings that we've been able to make. Now there's still a month left of the transfer window, so we don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but Luis Enrique has made the signings that he wanted to make. These are the signings that he wanted to make. This is the team that he wanted to have. We don't know if more players are going to hand in transfer requests or if we're going to let anybody else go at the moment. But that's what the team looks like at the moment. The captaincy is given to Sergio Busquets, one of the most experienced players here, one of the players that have played the most games for FC Barcelona. We feel like in the heart of midfield, he can wear that captain's armband with a lot of pride. So again, if you have any questions for Luis Enrique, I'll be holding press conferences 
every start of the month or so. And if there's enough questions for me to make a press conference out of it, we'll be having one in the next episode. So... Leave your questions and your queries about the rest of the season, about any more players. If you've heard any rumors that you would like Luis Enrique to talk about, go ahead and let me know in the comments section down below. But that's it for today's episode, guys. I hope you do enjoy this little bit of a different series idea. I don't know how you guys are going to receive this. Of course, there's no Messi, and that's really the allure of Barcelona. That's really what people like about Barcelona is having the likes of Messi and Neymar. But we're trying to replace them as best as we can. And with two five-star skillers on each wing, um, this team is actually looking really, really good. I'm actually very excited to play some games with this team. But again, let me know what you guys think of this series idea. We're not technically the manager, so it's a little bit different. I wanted something different. I, I was sick of traditional standard career mode, so let me know what you guys think of this, and let me know what you think of me being the head of social media at FC Barcelona. If you did enjoy the episode, make sure you leave a like on the video. I'll see you guys in the next one very soon. Keep it real.